It's July 28th, and on this day in 2003, Mario Golf Toadstool Tour debuted. One of the weirdest tales in video game history is that of Camelot Software Planning. Originally established in 1990 as an internal division of Sega, and known for a while as Sonic Software Planning, the studio eventually went independent and changed its name to Camelot. Now, the idea of developers leaving Sega behind might not seem so strange in this day and age, after the great post-Dreamcast diaspora, but this split happened in 1995, when Sega was still strong and vital as a first party. But Camelot went their own separate way, continuing to develop new entries in the Shining RPG series while working on other ventures. Camelot got its start making RPGs, and for the most part, that's where they planted their flag on other platforms too. Their first game for a publisher besides Sega was Beyond the Beyond for Sony's PlayStation. Their second PlayStation game, on the other hand, couldn't have been further from their usual RPG shenanigans. Hot Shots Golf established what would become Camelot's second design track, sports games, specifically golf. In 1999, Camelot finally completed their betrayal of their original masters by teaming up with Sega's longtime nemesis Nintendo, right when Sega needed them most. But at first, at least, the games they made for Nintendo, the Mario Golf series, then Mario Tennis, were nothing at all like their shining work for Sega, at least not on consoles. The portable Mario Golfs tended to bring Camelot's two disciplines together, combining sports and RPGs into one. But Camelot's console golf and tennis titles proved to be considerably more straightforward. Which brings us to Mario Golf Toadstool Tour for GameCube, which debuted on this day in 2003. It's regarded by many players as the pinnacle of the Mario Golf series. It focused heavily on the nuts and bolts of the sport, eschewing RPG elements like experience points altogether in favor of a trophy system that let players unlock more advanced characters based on how well they performed on the links. Toadstool Tour featured standard modes like a tournament and competitive play, but it also made full use of the Mario license. Besides familiar characters, you also had elements like Starman power-ups and arcade-like minigames and challenges. It was about as great a golf game as you could hope for, mixing rock-solid golf fundamentals with weird Mario stuff in equal measures. It was a game that worked as both a balm for the golf enthusiast and a hook for sports casuals with a yen for Mario. Really, the only ones losing out here were Sega. Sorry, Sega. For US Gamer, I'm Jeremy Parrish. Please subscribe to our channel and join us again tomorrow for a look at Sega's attempt to save the whales.